Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Siri, and I'm back with another PyTorch video. And we're moving on to a different type of tabular data. I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say that we're moving on from tabular data. We're just going to be talking about a more specific form of that in this video, and we're going to be talking about time series. And so, if you know, if you've noticed in our past few videos, we've talked about the quality of wine, and if you took a look at each of the samples right each of the different rows none of them had information about you know the previous sample right we were only discuss if we were looking at one sample we were just looking at one sample it had no relationship with the previous one had no relationship with the one next to it right um, or after it it was on its own it was independent from all the other samples and so there was no column that was encoded in to the row or into all the rows that told you about the previous um row there wasn't any attribute there wasn't any column that told you about that previous row so that was the case in our previous few videos so that's not going to be the case in this video because now there is a relationship okay what if there was a relationship and what if we had, let's put this into the context of our wine um, quality data set, right? What if, what if we, um, <clears throat> excuse me, what if we had the data that told us about how the quality of wine changed over the years, right? Then you would expect to see a different quality of wine that happened four years later than the starting point, right? So... Um, so then there's this time component to it. So don't get scared by that. It's just, um, it just tells you another, another relationship, except now that relationship isn't just between the different values in one sample. It's between the different samples. Okay. It's among, it's a relationship among different samples. And that relationship happens to be time. Okay. How much time passed? Okay. So that would have been interesting if we had, the data that told if we had data that told us how the quality of wine changed but unfortunately we don't and um you might want to do that yourself if you have time or if you have interest but um we're going to be focusing on another data set okay and this is going to be um a bike sharing system okay so actually before we get there let's um insert cell above and let's just write down what we've noted. Okay, so relationship between different samples. Um, that relationship is the time component. Um, so basically like how much time passed. Okay, good. So in Instead of using our wine quality because we don't have that data, um, <clears throat> in as, as a form of time series, we're going to be using a bike sharing system. So that's going to report the hourly count of rental bikes, okay, with the other weather um, attributes or like whatever happened in that day or hour, um, and we'll see how that impacts how many bikes are being rented, okay? So we also have like seasonal info, like time of day, um, weather, temperature, humidity, okay? And since this is gonna be the hourly count, um, you know, we're gonna have this time component to it and this is gonna be a time series, okay? And why is this important? <clears throat> why would, how would time help us? Right? So, for example, if we noted that it rained an hour ago or two hours ago, right? Will that impact what's happening right now? Right? This is just like daily life. This is like the truth of life, right? So, your past is going to impact your present and it's going to impact the future. And you can use that past um, to, you know, make future goals, make future predictions of what you're going to do. Um, same with the bike sharing system, same with any other time series, whatever happened before is going to 
probably impact what's happening right now or what might happen. Um, right, so let's look at, okay, if we look at the original table, which we will, and we will definitely be using pandas. I know we didn't in the last one, and I don't think we ne we necessarily needed um, pandas for that one because we didn't do any, um, actually, I don't, I don't know. We didn't use pandas. So in this one, in this video, we are going to be using pandas. And you don't need to be completely familiar with it. Um, we'll go through the necessary information or whatever we need to know in this video. Okay, so pandas is just great for tabular data. I think we went over that in another video. Um, it's great for tabular data. Okay, because it lets us visualize and it lets us easily manipulate our data. Because um, we can see the rows and the columns, we can drop them easily. We can change whatever values we want. We can fill in um, null values into, like, if we have missing data. And we can, we can do a lot of data manipulation using pandas, especially if it's in, um, or actually only if it's in tabular data. Okay? if it's in that form. So, yeah. Um, so if we look at the original table, which we will in a second, we want to add a dimension for the different days. We want to add a separate dimension from the time of day. So whether it's afternoon, midnight or like you know the different hours um so the dimension for time of day and um the last dimension um would just be for our regular regular um our regular attributes like weather um humidity, temperature, whether maybe um, a restaurant was open nearby. I don't think they actually have that, but, <laughs> you know. Okay, whatever. Um, so, yeah, this is how our dimensions are going to be set up. And remember, we can have, like, different... Um, we can have multiple attributes in one dimension, right? So, um yeah, that's the way it's going to work with our last dimension. Okay, so each row is a separate hour of data. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Each row is a separate hour of data. The columns are different attributes. And here are a few examples. Weather, humidity bike count, etc. Um, and the different layers from front to back. Um, forgive the noise. So I guess you can visualize this as, you know, a cube. Um, so if we go here and if we take a look at a cube, right, not the movie, <laughs> um, you know, we have different, like, we have different dimensions, like there's a layer from front to back, maybe if we see, like a Rubik's cube, maybe. Okay, so like, you know, the layers from front to back, you see three different yellow, you see three different layers here. I'm drawing my cursor around it. So one, this is the second one. This is the third one. So like up and side, up and side there. So if you like break it up, if you break up the Rubik's cube into, um, you know, three, three squares. Um, so that's the, those are the layers from front to back. And, um, the columns are just, you know, the columns and the rows, I guess. You can figure out, right? So, yeah. Um, so that's how it's going to look. So the different layers... Oh, I didn't tell you. Okay, they're going to be the different days. 
Okay, so the layers that you saw are going to be the different days. So this is the first day, this the second layer, second day, third day. Um, and in, in each of those days, you have a dimension for the time of day and the regular attributes. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. Um, let's load our data using NumPy again. Um, Yeah, um, so let's say that bikes, okay, we didn't import NumPy yet, did we? Import NumPy um, as NP and say bikes NumPy is equal to um, NP.load text. So that's what we do whenever we have some text data, some tabular data. Um, and so I downloaded bike sharing data set our fixed i think this is the exact name of the csv file i didn't change it um so if you just search this up you should find something similar to this and the reason why i don't have to pass in the path is because it's in the same spot okay it's in the same spot as this jupyter notebook same folder same um directory and so yeah or at least I think it is. If it's not, then I'm going to have to pause the video again and um, put it in the right spot. So when we... Okay, this isn't the only argument, though. Okay, so we have... What CSV file are we looking at? We have the data type. Um, it's not a Python data type, right? Because that's that would be Python class, and you, you, you would use the type um, function, built-in function. And... I mean, you can also use it for NumPy objects too, but what I'm saying is NumPy objects and tensors, they specifically have a D type. Um, and so, yeah, so it's going to be an mp.float32. Okay, that's what I want it to be a delimiter. Delimiter. Um, so, how are we separating the values? Comma with a comma. Skip rows. Do we want to skip any rows? Yeah, I want to skip the first one because that's just the name. Those are just the names of the columns. Um, converters. This is going to be a lambda function. This is a Python lambda function. Okay, one. Then lambda x. Um, and then float x. Float, float of x, 8, 10. We'll talk about this in a second, okay? I promise. Um, and so, actually, <laughs> yeah, literally in a second. We're going to be talking about it right now. Okay, so this converts um, the date strings to numbers that correspond to the day in the month um, in column 1. So this is just, con this is like, we have some dates in the CSV file and we're converting it. So it'll um, be nice in our NumPy array. Okay, so that's why we're using this Lambda function. And by the way, Lambdas are just anonymous functions in Python. They're just one line functions. That's why you don't really need a name because you don't expect to be using it again. Um, and yeah, so that's just some background. So let's maybe write this in a comment, right? So, so let's say converts. Okay, wait. Converts date string to numbers that correspond to the day of the month in column one. Okay, so that's, I guess that's actually, um, actually never mind, yeah, in column one. These are row one, this is the row, first row, this is the first column. Okay, there's a, there's a difference. Um, that's it, okay? And let's create another from this NumPy array, let's run it. Okay, what did we 
do wrong. Okay, I didn't put a space here. Okay. File not found. Okay, give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, it's in the right spot now. So when I run it, it should be fine. Still? Okay, maybe let me check the name again. Okay, one second. Alright, I see the issue. Um, it's not our underscore fixed. It's our hyphen fixed. So we run it and it's all good. So let's convert our NumPy. Okay, let's check out the type of bikes. NumPy, it's just a NumPy array. Okay, so now let's convert the NumPy array to a PyTorch tensor. Um, so well, let's say that's equal to bikes torch dot from NumPy. This is a factory method in which we can, you know, create tensors. Okay, create and initialize tensors. And we didn't import torch. Okay, great. Bikes, NumPy. Okay, great. Um, so let's check out what bikes looks like. Um, we'll just see a bunch of values and yeah. Um, great. So for every hour, the following values are reported. Let me just list them out. Um, actually, let me. Do we need to? Let's import pandas. Let's read. Let's read it. Let's look at the. Um, Pandas as PD. Okay. So bike PD is equal to PD.readCSV. That's a function that lets you read the CSV file. And okay, let me just copy paste that. Okay, it reads us, it reads it to us. Reading just literally reads it, it displays it to us. And if we print out bike PD, Okay, wonderful. So these are the different columns. Um, don't think we see all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to do something else to see the columns, but yeah, you get a feel for it, right? So the instant, right? Okay. Um, the date day. Right, the date string, the season, the year, the month, the holiday, weekday, weather, um, temperature, humidity, wind speed, right? All these different components affect whether people actually rent a bike or not. And so it's going to affect the overall number or um, total number of um, rented bikes. So those are why we think that the attributes will affect the target um, values. So that's why we're looking at these. And um, let's manipulate this in our next video. Um, and, you know, let's just end on a final um, note that time series are important, right? Like, um, we could ignore the time aspect and, you know, just treat each row as independent um, entries and say, hey, it doesn't matter whether, whether it was raining, like, an hour ago or, like... It doesn't matter that today was a holiday and you see zero. Um, actually, you don't see zero. Never mind. These are just the values. Um, you see, you see holiday. Um, probably like if it's, if it is a holiday, probably you'll get one. If it, and if it isn't, you get zero, right? And that's going to impact whether people rent bikes or not because maybe people don't rent Maybe people don't rent bikes on holidays, or maybe they do, right? So that's important. We should take into consideration, you know, what's happening an hour ago. What happened an hour ago? What was the wind speed an hour ago? Is it too is it too much? Will people not want a bike? Um, you know, like not only we not only should check the wind speed of right now, we should check it of an hour ago. We should check it like in an hour. Or a few in a few hours or a few hours ago, right? That's I want to stress that point, um, and it allows us to make better predictions um, if we knew it was raining at an earlier time. 
Okay, so there is an order ordering, and that was um, what I've been talking about in my previous video about the different types of values. You know, the categorical values, continuous values, ordinal values, and um, I think you should definitely check that out if you um, need a bit of a refresher and want to learn more about it. Um, I think it's my first tabular data video, and um, you know, we'll we'll manipulate this later. Okay. Now we know what the data looks like, we've converted it, we've used pandas, um, we know what it looks like as a tensor, and um, yeah, this is like a to be continued sort of thing, okay? Um, yeah, thank you so much, I hope you learned something new today um, about time series and why it's important to look at the relationship between different samples if it's applicable, uh, only if it's applicable, if it's not then it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, and that relationship is going to be a time component. And how pandas is great for tabular data. Um, and how PyTorch is too. Alright, um, thank you so much and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.